All right, all right, all right. Welcome back to another Shoe Snob unboxing video series, One Take Wonders. Here we are back again. Sorry, it's been a long time, but uh, I've been real busy and I'm starting to travel a lot more now for business. So let's just say my time is getting thinner and thinner. So here I am forcing out some videos really quick as I got a lot to do. You see all these boxes, I gotta take them to a storage. It's just, you know, non-stop. But anyways, enough about me, let's get straight into it. So I got another pair of shoes from Chinese shoemaker, Yearn Shoemaker. Uh, for those of you that follow, you probably saw the video I did on the Lazy Man Brogues. Uh, I don't remember when that was, maybe two years ago. Um, they were recently at the London Super Trunk show in May and I got to see some new models and I saw one that I thought was phenomenal and I wanted to review it. So they kindly sent me a pair so that I could showcase it to all of you. So let's take a look. We've already seen the box, so I won't go into all of that. <clears throat> Let me just read what it says right here. Style, two eyelid derby in olive patina. Last, Y01. Different last than what I tried before. I don't recall what that last was, but it was a chisel and this is not. For Justin Fitzpatrick, size UK six and a half, my standard size. All right, let's get into it. So, let's get the shoes out. I did notice something different. I don't believe this was in the first box. This is a little brass plated uh, shoehorn, which is really nice. It's kind of heavy. <laughs> you know, uh, very beautiful though. Very nice. You know, usually you get plastic ones because you know the cheap. It makes sense, but this is a nice solid brass plated shoehorn, um, or it could be. Uh, I forget the other words. Sorry, I'm drawing blanks. Looks like brass plated. Could be something else, but feels like quality. All right, let's break it out. Dun dun dun. Now, of course, many of you will automatically be thinking, wow, that looks like a corte. And I know this because you guys love to comment this on any derby that doesn't have four or five eyelets that everything looks like a Corte. And you know what? I love Corte. Pierre's an amazing designer, but I'm pretty sure the original creator of the one or two eyelid derbies was actually Olga Berludi. So definitely when you're comparing, know who started those things. And not everything looks the same. There's inspiration. Lines are different. Things are different. It's really hard to change a two eyelid derby. It's like changing a Chelsea boot. What do you change? So uh, anyway, Let's jump into it. A style most likely inspired by the famous Arca by Corte, which is great because that's what we're meant to do as shoe designers, inspire others to make things similar. But different price point, different clientele. So let's hop into it. Beautiful shoe. I saw this at the London Super Trunk Show and I was enamored. I'm hoping you can see the patina. It's actually very dark. Uh, it's a dark olive patina with kind of light uh, accentuations on the toe, the facing, and the counter. So it's a reverse patina because it's light to dark as opposed to dark to light. Um, beautiful. Now I will say that the tongue is very reminiscent of the Arca with the kind of cut notches here. Beautiful two eyelid derby. I'm not a derby lover. I'm not a traditional derby lover. The derbies that you see in these British and American brands, heavy, brogue, round toed, this, that, not for me. But a French style derby, a two, one eyelet, maximum three eyelet derby that you could easily wear with a suit and that is, in my mind, just as elegant as an Oxford, I am a fan of. And I'm definitely a fan of this shoe. So, one thing that uh, jumped out when I saw these was I just felt like the level of detailing got a lot better from the first shoe they sent me to this. Um, the waist is beautifully crafted. It's really taken in and really like tight to the leather. So you can definitely see that there's some handwork in there. You can't get that kind of, that kind of shape and work without handwork. And I'm pretty sure 
I'm pretty sure Yuren told me these are 100% handmade, even the sole stitch. Now that sole stitch, it actually looks like it could be done by hand because it's not 100% flawless. That's kind of how you tell. When the sole stitch is so clean and the line is super straight, that should be done by machine. Uh, because if you're taking the time to make every single hole as straight as possible, I mean, that's usually in bespoke shoes that are, you know, seven times the cost of this. So um, if they're doing it by hand, I imagine they're doing it quick and they're doing a pretty good job because while you can kind of see some stitches not exactly in the same direction as the one prior or following, it's flawless work for hand work. Um, leather's beautiful. Everything's beautiful. It's... Yearn Shoemaker is very impressive, uh, in my opinion, for the pricing. Now, I got to hear on how they do this. And I hope I'm not sharing uncommon knowledge. I think it's common knowledge in China, but outside of China, it might not be. But Yearn Shoemaker is actually owned by a parent company or the factory. It, I, I, I can't get too heavy into the specifics because I didn't dive so deep into it. But I know that they're able to offset the pricing because they make a lower end line that they only sell in China. So I imagine when they're buying the hide, which they're very smart businessmen, if they're doing this, I wish I was capable of doing this. When you buy your hide, right, you have this big hide and you cut certain sections, quality sections, less quality sections. So I imagine what they're doing is cutting first for yearn the higher end stuff and then the leftover they use for the lower end line so that's how they're able to kill two birds in one stone by buying one hide and then separating the different pieces for their different quality lines um which makes a lot of sense and is smart business to be honest uh so i don't actually know the price of these because for some reason they're not on the website and i imagine it's because it's a newer model which i know and it's probably still at a made to order uh, line but I imagine they'll get that up soon so because I will tell them hey how am I gonna do the video if I can't lead people to support the the model because I'm sure a lot of you are gonna like this uh, anyway let's get back into the shoe shoe is beautiful I love this uh, why one last I love a uh, nice elegant round last chisel lasts are nice but I don't love them on me I like seeing them on other people. I do like a nice, beautiful, elegant, round last. Um, the shape is just, look at these lines, just beautiful lines. The heels, you know, on the smaller side, but I don't mind that. I don't like the makers that have these huge heels. So this is a slightly smaller. I like my heels about an <coughs> inch and an eighth. This looks like about an inch, but still beautiful lines here on the shoes. The shape is flawless. The fit was good for me, but I don't know if that means good for you because I have a shallow foot. The last shoe, the Lazy Man, was very voluminous in the forefoot, but very low in the instep. I have a lower instep, so it was good, but almost too low to the point where like, I don't know how some people uh, stayed, can stay in there, like can even get in there. And then on the other shoe, the heel height felt uh, low. So it looks like they've changed a few things. Uh, the forefoot actually fit me great, not too voluminous for me. Instep was perfect, it fit me like a glove. Uh, heel height seems higher, which grabbed the heel better. Again, I know why Chinese shoemakers will have lower heels and, and somebody, uh, a Chinese person actually enlightened me on this and it's because the Chinese foot tends to have a lower ankle bone and or maybe not necessarily just the Chinese, but the people in the kind of uh, Asia Pacific area have a lower ankle bone. And I, and I see this actually in my own shoes when clients that are from that area will, will feel rubbing here and they won't buy the shoe because it's very uncomfortable and hard to break that part in. Uh, and so a lot of times a Chinese shoemaker will lower this line, but then it's not great for the non kind of Asian Pacific person that has a higher ankle bone and, and their heel feels like they're popping out. So 
it's an interesting kind of uh, conundrum to be in for selling to different markets and makes you actually think about things that sometimes you don't think about when you're only selling to one market and to one type of person. So the heel felt higher, my foot felt more secure, the fit was great. Um, I'm gonna dare to say, I mean, they're, the average price shoe is like 500 bucks for fully handmade, top quality leather. I don't see any flaws in this. It's beautifully finished, beautifully done. Um, they offer some of the best value uh, value for price there is. It's, it's, it's hard to beat this. Handmade shoes for 500 bucks, fully handmade, using top quality leather. Again, they're able to do that because of their other brand. Smart, smart business. Uh, beautiful sole. UK six and a half fit me flawless. That's what I usually take a lot of times. If the shoe is a standard fit, it fits me well. Some last fit big, some last fit small. Those fit me just right. Beautiful shoe, Yearn Shoemaker. Definitely check out their site. If by the time I launch this, they're not on the site, I will get them to do it ASAP. Do send them an email. They're good at responding on Instagram messages. Uh, so do check that out. And thank you, as always, for tuning in. I hope you've enjoyed this shoe. Please do like, share, subscribe. The algorithms are actively suppressing if you're not a super smart algorithm tech guy, which I'm not. I'm just making videos and hoping you guys love the content. So help me by pressing the like button, sharing, subscribing, telling your friends about it. I'm just here to help educate and share all the beautiful shoes of the world with all of you. Thanks as always for tuning in. Wishing everybody a great day. Take care. Bye.